What up, ladies and gentlemen? Good evening, and welcome to Late Night Live number 40. Number 40. Sorry, I'm a minute late. I was going through a book and I got distracted. That is quite a quote, Mamet. <laughs> I think I feel like writing. I'm just gonna write tonight. I think I'm gonna write some, put together some names and practice. Probably gonna practice some ascender loops just because uh, a few people on Instagram requested that. I'm just gonna chill. I haven't written yet today. So we're just gonna have a chill writing night tonight. Oh, there's the whole thing, got it. Emptiness, which is conceptually liable to be mistaken for sheer nothingness, is the fact, is in fact the reservoir of infinite possibilities. <whistles> that is one heck of a quote. What's going on, wannabe penman? <laughs> I'm doing quite well, thank you. How are you? Here we go. Let me get warmed up here. I'm going to start with white ink tonight. I might transfer over to walnut later. We'll see how how I feel about it. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the same issue I was having last time. My hairlines are borderline. They're, they're visible, but they're almost invisible to the point where they're they're on this paper with this nib. They're, dare I say, too fine, which is not something we usually say because we want the finest of the fine. What's going on, Ashark? Welcome. But I'm getting problems where, like, from right there to there, that hairline looks like it disappeared it's technically there but it's just too light i have a feeling that is this paper nib ink combination causing that oh yes i know you're on the discord i couldn't remember um i couldn't remember your name sorry sorry jay i will try to remember now try to slow down a little bit tonight not in still going quick enough that I can consider what or call what I'm doing movement writing but slow down in the way of relaxing what up Judy getting warmed up so I can write some names I feel like I don't want to just write it like when I do I'm writing names I'll post on Instagram and people will uh, request their names and I'll write them all. I want less of that tonight and I think I want to um, maybe work on some specific letter combinations or if somebody gives me a name I want to actually try to take a little bit more time with each name suggestion and design or plan out something that's a little um, a little more thorough than when I just do name writing, which is usually off the cuff, just what comes out of my head or what I can think of really quickly. I wanna go through a little bit of the um, vintage style signature design process tonight. Once I get warmed up, I think. I 
Yeah, see, all of my upstrokes are borderline invisible. I'm trying to figure out, trying to change the orientation of my nib to see if that can fix it. It's very peculiar, peculiar. I don't want my upstrokes to disappear entirely. I could potentially add a little bit of water to my ink as well. Beautiful Tuesday evening here. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Normally, I go take a dance class. I normally train tomorrow. But the studio I teach and train at is closed uh, because of new, uh, new restrictions. It's closed for the next, I think, three weeks. So I have, uh, I have more time now. I gotta fill tomorrow with something exciting and I don't know what that's gonna be yet. I don't know if you guys can even see those upstrokes on the camera. They're <laughs> incredibly fun. In a way that is not um, what I'm going for. They're incredibly fine, but borderline, like I said before, too fine, unfortunately. But I'm not going to worry too much about it today. As long as there's a line there that I can see. Senders aren't terrible today, <laughs> which is nice. Well, that one was terrible, though. Visible right on. That's good to know. All right. I'm gonna do this exercise for a little bit here, actually, because it's. I feel like every week I say I need to work on my ascender loops, and I never actually do work on my ascender loops. So I'm gonna take a few moments here, not too too long, and actually do some of uh, this little drill here, which is just doing. Um, five squished ovals and then doing double that so then doing ten uh, push-pull straight lines and then going back into five ovals which is one of the one of the Zaner Blozer exercises that they suggest I try to do it at a tempo that I would do the actual letter at rather than do it quicker. Fine. I see a lot of people I feel like do that. They, uh, they'll do their ovals wicked wicked fast and then they write really slow or their movement writing isn't the same tempo as their, as their drills, which if your drills that you're doing in that moment are specifically to like warm up and get your blood flowing, then that's fine. Um, but you should be technically practicing the uh, the tempo or the actual movement you're using. 
um, for your writing because then it's well, it's like it's like learning or it's like practicing running if you're just gonna walk um, there are two the balance involved and everything involved is different the physicality and everything so you may as well just practice walking if you're gonna walk or if you're gonna jog you practice jogging you don't sprint and then jog that doesn't make sense I mean, the champion method of penmanship, her book is one of the most descriptive in, it's gotta be, it's easily one of the best uh, business writing books out there, I would say, in my opinion anyways. When the day comes that I decide to add a little bit or to pay a little more attention to my business writing. Uh, hers is the book that I will likely follow through from beginning to end, if that day ever comes. Whoa, that is just like a straight line. So now, I'm currently, because I know one of the issues that I have, specifically with Ascenders, is when I start at the baseline, I can usually get this nice flowing shape like so, a nice, uh, the shape I'm looking for, uh, but this is starting sort of moving, um, and it's not take into, taking into account the downstroke that usually has to come from the letter after it. So I don't like stopping, like I don't like doing a downstroke lifting and then coming to do my next letter. I want to do that downstroke into the upstroke um, at once and that's where uh, my arm apparently, at least that's my theory anyways, that's where it gets thrown off. Rather than doing a nice ascended stroke like that, I get thrown off when I have to do the downstroke into the ascended stroke. Because I don't like doing my downstroke super quick. Um, because the chances of going beyond the baseline are a little bit too high for my liking. Too squished. Do one more line of those, I think. Does my hair look, it is pretty dark. My, I think my lights are lower than normal, the way everything's set up now, so the background and my hair and everything here is a little darker than normal, perhaps. change my lights around so often when I'm taking pictures of blotters or doing other videos at different times of the day and stuff like that that I don't have a, a constant good setup that I keep going back to unfortunately. I understand lighting but I dislike dealing with lighting <laughs> so I just kind of I know videographers and whatnot say that good lighting makes or breaks your uh, your video and I agree with that but at the same time there are more important things to me for these sessions I should have taken a little more time to set things up a little bit nicer today perhaps Ooh, that was a good one
Would be used for something like a capital W. I prefer the Zenarian style loop or the pure Spencerian style loop. I mean, most of the Zenarian style loops are business penmanship. Um, I don't. I mean, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, they're they're loops. They all essentially follow the same idea. Um, it's. I don't think I have a preference. I'm not that. Uh, strict, picky, specific about it because I don't believe they were to be quite honest. What up Ojo Swinney? I mean as an example of that, speaking of how not specific they were just to drive that point home a little farther one second here So, the Zenarian method of our movement writing, probably one of the most specific um, books about movement writing, and as you can see, it's very, um, very detailed in its explanations. If we look at how this book teaches the ascender stroke, this is, so this is the published book. All of these, there is not a what what penman today would consider a really good uh, L or a really good ascended loop doesn't exist on this page. And this page is a publication that teaches the loops, which tells me that penmen today are it's, it's way too specific. It's not that specific. I mean, if somebody if you want to get that specific, then you can, but. Um, I think that leads to analysis paralysis, uh, to be honest, and I think it leads to, uh, I don't know, it just, it takes away from, from the writing. Um, I mean, having consistent things and stuff like that is important, but the sheer fact that the public, the published books don't always have the exact same or the what we consider the perfect form. I don't know. I don't know specifically that at the time the perfect form was the perfect form. I also think the form evolved a lot. Um, so I like to stay away from the, the really specific little intricate breakdowns and stuff like that because we are human. We are, we are people. Uh, a lot of the perfect, perfect, perfect forms that we see were engraved. Um, and that's not to say we can't shoot for the perfect form, but the writing is happening at a tempo and at a, at a style of application that it, it's, inhuman to expect that amount of perfection all the time and if you acquire that amount of perfection awesome but 
I feel like getting too into those specifics, um, specifics are important uh, to a degree, obviously. Other, otherwise, things are going to be all chaotic and, and not clean. Um, but there comes a point where the specifics take a second place to to what the what the piece is or says um another good example what is known as one of the best letters or best samples of ornamental penmanship ever is the modernized letter that we wrote uh that i wrote last week um there are so many uh in inaccuracies and mistakes in that letter uh but you don't notice them because the the whole thing looks beautiful is every loop the exact same and at the ex follow the exact same thing no they're pretty much on the proper angle so they look it's like they look close enough to be really nice but they're not computer perfectly close um because that's not what the that's not what writing well for me anyways that's not what writing is about <laughs> That's alright, Jay. Sloppy attempts, uh, they work. Um, I've said it many times, I never sought out to be a good penman. I like, like the stuff I'm doing right now, I like this practice. And obviously when you're practicing, the goal is always to do the form that you're studying or the form that's in the book, but that is never really the... I just spilled ink. Whoops. No, I didn't. Yay. It just got on the edge of my jar Phew. um it's not an attempt to become a penman if you write you be a penman if you write a lot you're a penman sure there are varying degrees of the of different penmen's capabilities but there's also varying degrees of what different penmen are trying to strive for um if you're a penman who is striving for that perfect form, then you're going to be studying things that are going to lead you towards that perfect form. Um, I personally am not one of those penmen. The perfect form, though, is always sort of, it's, it's a target, but it is not what is important about writing to me. Um, case in point for uh, ascended loops. Um, if you've been watching any of my live videos, you've heard me on countless occasions talk about I, how I have crappy ascended loops because I do. Uh, sometimes they come they come out really nice, and other times they are really inconsistent and can ruin a piece. Um, because I want to train my arm to do them a specific way. If I wanted to have perfect ascended loops all the time, I mean, this is I would turn my paper. And then if you watch here, if I turn my paper like so, almost so it's 90 degrees to my body, and I can use hinge movement, and I can get ascender, 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 super quick. I don't even have to think about it. And they're all very close. They're not the exact same because I did those pretty quick and off the cuff, but they are they're nicer than all the other senders I have on this page. So it's, if I was trying to get the perfect Morse Chris most detailed ascender ever, I would just do that because that's the easier way to do it. But the turning of the page changes, it, it, it stops the flow of my writing when I'm doing correspondence or when I'm doing a piece or something like that. So I'm training my hand to do a better ascended loop um, without having to rotate the paper. Because to me, the flow of the whole writing session is more important than that perfect ascended loop. If my ascended loop becomes crummy, that's fine. Um, I actually just sent out a, a blotter and a letter um, to Martha, some of you will know her, uh, in Australia. And in the letter that I wrote her, I have a huge, there's a huge mess up in it. And I actually put in brackets and in block capitals an LOL that's horrendous because it's a huge mistake, but that's that's the flow of that writing piece and that's what happened. Um, and I felt it was kind of funny. So I sent it rather than 
chucking the whole thing in the garbage and starting again, which I could have done, but for me, it's not about perfect. If one day I'm doing the forms perfect, cool. That's, I mean, that's, that's good. And I'll create more, uh, better work, I suppose. Um, but that's not the, uh, the driving force, really. All that saying, that is for me. It's different for everybody. Like we've always said, if somebody, if somebody tells you something is right or wrong, they are wrong. There is no right or wrong. There is how you feel about it and how you want to do it. Yeah, like for me doing ascended loops this way with my paper not rotated at such a, uh, an extreme degree, I'm now using my push push pull movement rather than my um, hinge movement, which is, I mean, just going with the flow of the human body, which is a much less natural position. I thought about training my other, like my, my whole writing, to to happen at this at this angle. Um, if I could train all my other letters to go at this angle, then I could get perfect ascenders. But what stopped me from that is capital stems and whatnot. I can't, I just, with my nib, I would have to be at such a crazy angle to be able to do a capital stem with my paper turned this way, that it's, it's for me, uh, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This would be the path of least resistance, I guess. If I practice it this way, if I train to do the ascenders, everything else feels comfortable at this angle. And then if I want something to be really, really perfect, like I said, if I was writing a letter or doing a piece uh, that I wanted to be perfect, and it wasn't so much about the flow, but it was the end result of that specimen and I had to be ultra careful, I would turn my page for every ascended loop um, until the day where I can do them as clean and as comfortable this way, which comes closer every day. These look, I mean, case in point, these aren't looking too, too bad today, aside from the fact that I don't seem to have an upstroke. <laughs> what up, Jose? Yes, it's true, Mohamed. We do have different approaches, which, which is why I never. I'm not gonna poo-poo on on your breakdowns and stuff like that. I think they're very, very intricate and very specific. The only thing I will say is I will caution you that that doesn't get in the way of your writing journal, or right, not journal, writing journey. Uh, it's easy to get caught up in the analysis, and then we don't get any writing done. <laughs> Just that little act of adding that downstroke totally changes the flow of everything. I mean, I've always said, um, it's in response to to you, Jay, for having goals and that kind of stuff. If somebody wanted to, the fastest path to getting the best penmanship, um, specifically if we're talking about lowercase letters and whatnot, it would be simply to grab a book. Um, for this, I would recommend the Zayner Arm Movement Writing or Mary Champion's book. But any of them, really, Barons Meyer's book, um, E.C. Mills's book, any of those for, for penmanship for business penmanship and follow them, but dedicate like a week or a month or like two weeks maybe, depending, but take every exercise and then don't actually turn the page until you master and master that exercise. 
and that could be that could mean an entire month of only doing this ascender exercise which to some people myself that would be boring and i would not want to do it but if i if my goal was to be the best penman that i could be the fastest way possible that's what i would do and i would be driven to do that because that would be my goal and that would be why i was doing it um and that's going to be the fastest way to train your muscles i don't necessarily i don't train that way because that's writing for me is very playful and fun um when i do train it's i'll spend hours doing that one page and and things like that and i won't practice other things um if my goal is very focused on getting like an ascended loop for example i would do ascended loops forever um was it just a few weeks ago i was working on the capital o and for about three or four days i practiced multiple hours a day doing nothing but the exact same capital o every single uh just over and over and over again um hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them at a time um comparing after each and every one not just doing o's uh, as I've said in the past, it's not about filling the page, it's about filling the page and progressing after every one. So I would do one, compare it, do one, compare it, feel how it feels. I like to experiment, so I would change angles, change things, change body positions to see what works better, what doesn't work better, what sometimes my body will tell me could work better once if I got comfortable with it which a perfect example of that is the traditional grip. Most people who start with a, what up Jagruti? Most people who start with a modern grip feel very uncomfortable with the traditional grip. But if you make that transition, movement writing is going to feel more natural, but it's difficult to do movement writing or it's, it's, it's difficult to make that transition without deciding that you're going to dedicate the time and attention to that and realizing that, oh, if, I, if I'm not comfortable with a mod or a traditional grip, for example, and I take one and I start to write, I think, whoa, this feels horrible, but it feels like if I got comfortable with it, this stroke would make more sense if I used this grip. Um, and that's sort of the basis of a lot of my experiments. Um, I do a lot of experiments just with flange angle, pen grip angle, body positioning, feet positioning. Some of the penmen back in the day, everybody would talk about your feet having to be f fully flat on the on the um on the floor. Other penmen would say flat on the floor, but the left foot slightly farther ahead or farther forward than the right foot. Um other penmen would obviously, as we know, some uh sit at angles and will sit this way to the desk. Um Another thing, going back to the ascended loop, um, if I wanted to do, now I let my ink dry, not supposed to do that, uh, but doing ascended loop, so let's say here I'm using my push-pull motion. Let's say I don't want to rotate my paper, but I want to engage um, hinge movement. I could move myself. If I move myself here, my paper stays the same. I am now not 90 degrees to the desk, I'm about 45 degrees to my desk, but you'll notice now if I do, if I do uh, an ascended loop, I can utilize hinge movement. So I could do that every time I had an ascended loop and then come back to do a normal one, come back to straight on for the rest of my letters. Uh, but I also don't want to do that. I don't want to rotate all the time, so I train the push-pull movement. What up, Ektra? Haha, <laughs> good morning to you. Sorry, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a... I don't feel like I'm in a ranty mood, but that was quite a bit of, of talking there. <laughs> I did a, a really fun talk last night with a local guild um, about Spencerian scripted ornamental penmanship. And when the whole thing was done, I think we went for two hours. Um, it was, I was just telling stories of my, sort of my penmanship journey and my penmanship story. When the whole thing was finished, I was texting a friend and I said, man, I talk a lot and I feel like I was just getting started. I could just, I could keep talking. Um, 
case in point, I'm here in my apartment by myself. I could talk about this stuff forever because I'm very passionate about it. What up, Gloria? Ooh, Jose, don't cross your feet. That require that causes restriction. <laughs> or cross your feet if that's more comfortable. <laughs> the loop rant. Not so much a rant, just, I mean, in general. It wasn't a rant, I guess. Rants are inherently negative. There's nothing negative about that. Just, uh, it's a lot of putting forth a lot of points. Nice. All right, let's get back here to, to writing. Now I kind of just want to do ascended loops for a while. I know I posted on Instagram that I was going to do, I do want to do some signature design, but. It's funny when I do the downstroke into it, my loops naturally become narrower, which is odd. It's a rather interesting um, thing. <laughs> That's gotta be because of my undercurve. What about Ghetto Ancho? <laughs> like this. Wait, well, I wrote Ancho up here actually. There's pointed pen Ghetto Ancho. <laughs> Ghetto Ancho is just Ancho written. Casually. I do believe, is that one of the extra or one of the scripts, not the ghetto version, but the real version, uh, pointed pen until I think Mike Kessick is teaching that right now with the European pen collect, European pointed pen group, I believe. He's doing pointed pen. I don't know if he's doing until in there. I think he is, but I don't know for sure. I don't remember. <laughs> do, 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 do. No problem, man. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit, Mohamed. Have a great day at work. Pointed pen black letter? Sounds fun. I should learn black letter one of these days. I need to get better at broad, broad pen scripts. I should have um, taken, there's a calligrapher and a tattoo artist in Berlin, Tales One, uh, Adam Klodecki. I should have taken his black letter course recently but I did not. It's just this movement that is never as comfortable as I want it to be. Oh, Teos one is extremely dope. Very, very good friend of mine. One of the nicest and most talented people I know.
Oh, nice. So you're in that class, Shiguri. Wicked. Oh, hey, Kelly. I will have to send Chin a thank you for that. I'm currently uh, just drilling my ascended loops, which, speaking of Chin, uh, she's one of the most frustrating people in the world <laughs> because her ascended loops are the most natural, easy thing ever for her, and it's incredibly frustrating to me. <laughs> She makes them look, they're just, they happen so fast and they're always so nice and clean. Like her standard, oh, there's, <laughs> I should have known that if James was here lurking, that would get him to comment. Um, it's true though, her, like when I do hinge movement, um, ascended loops, like I said, when I do these ones, they are supernatural and flow just the easiest things ever. I feel like the ease of those is what Chin's regular ascended loops are. It's the, if I could, it's a superpower that she has that I uh, do not. <laughs> oh, that's interesting, Oda Swinney. She's great. She is the first, uh, first penman, first calligrapher. Uh, when I started doing penmanship, aside from Michael Saul, she's the first, well, she's technically the first calligrapher that I met online before Instagram existed. Uh, I met her on the internet first and then I met Michael Saul and then I had, I met Chin in person. She was the first a uh, penman that I knew from the internet uh, that I met back in 2011? 10? Or 10 or 11, I think. One of those years. Way, way back when. Yep. We, uh, I remember, uh, I knew nothing about her. Uh, I'll be 100% honest, I didn't know she was a her on the Fountain Pen Network. And um, I just remember seeing her posts and being stoked that there was uh, one penman, uh, Pendleton Brown, um, a pen customizer. He w hosted a, comp like a, a contest and I won the contest and Chin submitted. And I remember being super, super proud and stoked because it was I was brand new to the world of calligraphy and penmanship, um, and I won. Uh, also hilarious, what I won with was not Spencerian, because I wasn't really doing Spencerian at the time. Uh, I was doing, like, just shaded fountain pen writing, but hilariously, and oh, just when you will enjoy this as well today, uh, the piece that won, um, I submitted two pieces, they were broad pen, and they were ghetto ancho. They weren't, <laughs> they weren't uh, Spencerian or pointed pen or even like copper plate or shaded writing. I'm now remembering the pieces I submitted. One was around. It was a quote that Pendleton gave, and the one was round. I wrote around the circle of uh, a tape roll. Put the tape roll down. Put the pencil down, and then the calligraphy went around that. And then the other one, and that was in Unchil. And then the other one was. The same quote, um, I think it was a Bible verse, carved into the back of a magnolia leaf. Um, and the back of a magnolia leaf is kind of fuzzy. And when you write in it with a, with a broad pen, the fuzziness, like if you go over the stroke a few times because of the wetness of the ink, it kind of ruins the fuzziness. So I wrote the whole thing with walnut ink and broad pen. And then I rinsed the leaf, it was a dried brown leaf, rinsed the leaf underwater, and what was left was essentially the writing carved into the fuzziness, because all the fuzz was gone where the ink was. So it was like an embossed effect on this leaf, which was cool and such a, a random uh, experiment and discovery. I had, I had never done that prior to that. 
uh, nor did I know that was a thing. I hadn't seen it either. I was just experimenting, thinking of clever ways that I could win this online fountain pen contest. Um, and that I won, which is stoked. And I was stoked that I beat Chin because Chin is incredible and I saw her work and stuff online and I was uh, very obviously very impressed. She was more established penman and calligrapher than I by far at the time. So fancy. Eh, it was just experiments. There was I used to live on Magnolia Street in North Hollywood and there was Magnolia trees on Magnolia Street and there was leaves all over and I remember picking one up one day and going, hmm, I bet you I could write on the back of this. And then I did, and I, I had that leaf up until when I moved from California back to Canada. I may have gotten rid of it, or it's in a cigar box somewhere in my home, and I don't know where. I may still have it. It's possible. There's a good chance that it would be cracked and into crumbling little pieces by now. But there's a chance I still have it somewhere. I always wonder, for the capital W, James, you're still in here. You can help me with this too. Maybe you know, or maybe you have a theory. The capital W is written like a very large um, L, lowercase l. And... I've always done them in one stroke with the exit, but I wonder if they broke it up into two strokes like they do the L. Feels weird doing it that way just because I've always done it. Uh, oh, just Winnie, it was a magnolia leaf, a magnolia tree leaf. You do it in two, okay. So you do just the first loop or the first and then you can you connect it like here, like you would do an L. I've never done it that way, but it makes a lot of sense to do it that way. <laughs> it's a lot easier. Oh, what I wouldn't give. Oh no, are you lying to me now, James? <laughs> I said it makes sense to do it that way, but it feels much... The flow is nicer when I do it all in one. But I'm assuming that's just because I'm not used to doing it in in two. I gotta look at some books and see if two if the books I can't remember if they break it down in one or two. Sorry that my hairlines are rather difficult to see today. All right, I'll take a break from the senders. Oh, you stop at the baseline. So you don't do a rounded, the, do you, you don't do the little rounded, uh, where it's round right here. You do then the, uh, Like so. Got you. I'm so used to doing the rounded one now. I really do a pointed bottom one. I used to only do those, but I always did them in one stroke. But that is a easy place to stop so long as you hit the baseline every time. I 
happy like shady. That's enough ascended loops for a while. Is my hand gonna shade good today? Let's find out. Whoa! That bee came out like borderline perfect. That doesn't happen every time. I mean, I'm not right in the middle of that center loop, but still, a good flow. Do a large one, really big. One more. Ugh, ugly stem. Damn's pretty. I mean, B is B is my favorite letter to write. It's not my best letter, I don't think, because it can be a rather challenging letter sometimes. Something about the B. I've always enjoyed writing Bs since the very beginning of my ornamental penmanship journey. Could blame Michael Soul for that, because of his, because of his beautifully flourished B. That I don't know that I can do in movement writing or not, but I'll try. Is it like that? No, oh, that's not right. That's not right. Oh, that's the wrong. <laughs> this bee's not supposed to even have a stem. Your, uh, this one here misses the stem, goes below the stem or above the stem? I would guess below the stem. That was common to see in, for like, even the traditional bee. In a lot of old specimens, you'll see the uh, the bottom shade of it go go below the baseline a little bit. You gotta you gotta rein it in above, James. That's no good. How how does it get above? There's so much stuff to squish into the second stroke of a B. I always end, I normally get it below the baseline. Because I'll make the top loop too big or something like that. There we go. I think that's a, that's a poor execution, but that's Michael Saul's B. <laughs> Below the baseline still looks like it's acceptable, I think, sometimes. It's just like when um, uh, traditional penmen, or the old, the old guys, when they would do the compound curve stem stroke as well, it was not uncommon for it to end ever so slightly below the baseline as well. But that you see quite often. I wonder if that was 
sometimes just sort of intentional. So that gave them a little bit more vertical space to transition into the horizontal oval for their exit. Maybe, I don't know. Or they just messed up. But you see that quite often. <laughs> a flying bowl of beef. All right, let's do a signature. Give me a name. Let's do, yeah, let's, give me a name. Let's, uh, let's work on a signature. Let's design something. And by a name, we'll go, we're going traditional style today. So a three initials and a last name. Doesn't have to be a full name, just chuck out some capital letters and we'll put some random ones together. Capital letters and a last name. We'll see what we come up with. We won't do specific you guys. I've done, I'm pretty sure everybody in chat's names probably countless times by now. Maybe, maybe not. But you now I know the chat is a little bit behind me, so I will wait to see your guys' name suggestions, and then we'll design a signature for said name suggestion. I suppose. Those are too big. R. W. Lovelace. James. I feel like I've designed at least three different versions of your name. <laughs> Here, Jose was the first one to get a name in there, so we'll do his first. What up, John Carlo? R. W. Lovelace. All right, let's plan this out. I'm gonna actually do some legit. Designing, I'm gonna put away the ink and I'll use, I guess not a mechanical pencil because I'm using black paper today, but I'll use a chalk pencil. RW Loveless. Let's do some designing here really quick. R and W, shame this, share the same stem, so that's nice. Oh, there's one issue. Getting into the W, if you go across there, that's potential for a problem. R, W, and then an L. You might have to use one of those little tricks that they did. I'm gonna try to make this look super traditional. I genuinely feel like I bet you I can go through from the, just at hand, James. Pause our regular schedule program. I bet you I can go through this folder and find your name. I'm almost certain it will be in here somewhere. If I just go through some random writing papers, we'll see if we find a signature that I did for James. <laughs> And just like that, here, let me get this out of the way. Just like that, in this random folder of writing, there's an attempt at, there's one design I did for you. I know I've done multiple. Because I'm pretty sure every single time you say, oh, mine's impossible. I, even if I'm not on video, I, in my brain, I just go, no, it's not. And I just set to designing one. Here's the designing page that had all the, the pencil sketches and whatnot of that one. That might be the only one that I'll be able to find in here. There is probably another one, though. Funny, anyways. I found one.
That's my, uh, that's my for the scrapbook folder. <laughs> for things that I'll eventually go through and decide if they're good enough for the scrapbook. Anytime I write something that's particularly pleasing, I'll put it in that folder. And the folder's getting a little big. Okay. So we're going to use this traditional exit for the W little shade right there to go into the S. Not an S, to go into the L. And we're actually going to use the L from last week's Sig Sling and Sunday signature because I like it. Compound curve from there into that. What was it? Loveless. give it a nice traditional compound curve on the end but for this RW oh you know what we can go from the R we can use another little we can use one of these a Tamblin esque connection in there that could work. That is something that Tamblin would have done. Ah, so Jay, it, that all depends on, I guess, the style of signature that I'm designing. Um, we talk a lot about balance when we're talking about signatures and whatnot. But if you look at a lot of the... A lot of the vintage signatures that we study and that we sort of consider uh, the best penmanship, a lot of those designs, the whole thing wasn't really balanced. Um, when we talk about balance for those, it's less to do with the entire name and more to do with how the capitals go together and the balance of sort of where the shades are placed. Um, but it was very common in the, even some of the best signatures, the lowercase letters of the last name come out and they'll obviously always jut out to the right side. And they don't, they, those were sort of on their own. Sometimes there would be like a single, um, uh, a single stroke flourish that came off of them or a penman would do a stroke off their last capital to sort of uh, encircle all of the lowercase letters. Um, but they didn't really balance out whole designs. So when we talk about balance in traditional designs, it's less about the uh, um, the actual balance of the whole thing. Whereas when I design like the modern signatures that I do for blotters and things like that, uh, like Jose's in here, like the one I did for his blotter, um, those signatures, I balance those like an entire piece so everything all lowercase letters and capital letters everything I try to the best of my ability that's what makes it difficult to balance out all of those um, easier said than done um, actually do I have it here I can show an example of a one that I was working on this week So this, for example, uh, is would be a signature that I, I mean, this isn't a signature as so much as a full name, um, but it's, it was one that I found long names are always harder to, harder to balance um, the way I balance my, my designs, my signature design. Um, so you'll notice we have Christopher, um, John, Dervin, Lorenziella. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but the hard part, we have, a, we have a super short name here, and then a middle length name here, uh, and then we have Christopher, which is mid length, and Lawrence Yellow, which is uh, long-ish. So getting the, the it's obviously not going to work out where there's capital, 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 and even spacing between them all, so you have to find creative ways that you can make all of the um, 
all of the flourishes sort of fit in nicely and look like the whole piece is somewhat balanced. Jeez, so long. Yeah, they're, uh, lately, I feel like the last, a lot of the signatures I've been doing lately, I don't know if it's, uh, people think it's more bang for buck if they, when I, when they put personalization in my store, there's been really, really long ones lately, which are a lot harder to, and I can't flourish them nearly as much, much shorter names I can get a lot crazier with because they're easier to balance, and then once it's balanced, you can add stuff on top of it, whereas longer names, it's all the time and whatnot is spent just getting balanced. So with this one, it's uh, not perfect balance, but obviously perfect unison and, and whatnot, or perfect um, symmetry and whatnot is not what we're going for in mirrored image, but it's... So we have a little bit of weight here, and then we have sort of this empty space, and then when we start this next three capitals, so next um, three capitals and two names, we're trying to keep this flow of stuff going on, all of this stuff, 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 stuff goes away a little bit for this one, but it's not super apparent. If I brought this higher, which is what I did originally, then there was too much space above the lowercase letters. But So there's all of this stuff until the ending of the L, and then if you notice the spacing of the letters themselves, uh, Christopher and John and Dervin are tighter spaced than Laurenciella. Laurenciella, uh, Lor... Loricella, Loricella, there we go. Loricella is spaced out a little bit more so that we can get approximately the same amount of open space in here as we have sort of more so in here. So then we have our flourish at the end. So we have a shade weight, we have shade weights all sort of filling this middle section and then the shade weight here at the end. Yeah. So it's so when I design things, um, and those are principles that I got from Michael Saul, that's the same type of idea that he uh, keeps in mind when he's when he's flourishing names and stuff. Um, I go as much as I can for the entire piece, but traditional vintage uh, signatures and, and card writing uh, card writing examples weren't really like that. The balance was rough, was specifically sort of the capital letters and the lowercase letters were just sort of tacked on a little bit at the end. Sometimes they would balance everything, but it's, I would say it's rarer uh, in the tradition, in the vintage pieces. Harvest blotter design. I'm trying to think if I have it close at hand here, if I can show everybody since you mentioned it. This is my signature design binder. It's, here, I'll zoom out while I flip through it. I've been meaning to do a, uh, a flip through of this uh, for social media, for YouTube or whatnot. Maybe I'll do that um, one of these days. But this is every signature that I've ever designed is in here. Um, and Harvest is in here somewhere. There's Suzanne Cunningham's. I liked hers a lot because uh, hers... This entry stroke to the S was something I had never done before. Um, and it came out after I created this super elaborate, crazy exit stroke. And I really liked it, and I kind of got married to the exit stroke. And then I had to figure out how to design, how to change the S so that it worked with that exit stroke. Um, I did harvest relatively early on, I think. It should be early in this book. There's a lot of signatures in here. This is one of my favorites that I've ever done, Derek S. Kubota, just because it looks cool. It's one that sticks in my memory. There's Michael Saul and Barbara Calzolari. Where are you, Harvest? Harvest, 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 Harvest. This one was one that was very unique, not uh, like my normal signatures, but it turned out really interesting. It was my first time using the F that I designed. Um, but it was a neat one. Where is it? I thought it was at the very beginning. I didn't think, I wasn't expecting to go through this entire thing, unless I missed it. Oh, 
there's Dr. Joe. Dr. Joseph M. Vitolo. His was a fun one to do. There's Harvests. News in here somewhere. Let's zoom in. It's a cool one. Again, we have a nice spiral. So we finish with a spiral. They're not uh, matching exactly. They're not mirrored images. Um, and then we have a nice spiral in the middle as well to balance everything out. Um, luckily, because Crittenden is slightly longer than Harvest, uh, with the, the shade on the H or the ovals and the spiral on the H and the spiral around the C, Crittenden was long enough that it gave me space before doing the, the ovals at the end. Like if Harvest's last name was a lot shorter, this design obviously wouldn't have worked at all. I would have to, um, it, the whole design would have been completely different. That's one reason uh, some Asian names can be rather challenging because the last name is really short. So you get a big, a big amount of uh, flourishing in ovals and then we have the first name, and then we have the middle portion, or the capital name, and then there's not enough to tag on after that first, or after the capital letter from the last name. So you have to really get creative with your exit strokes. Um, and it's a, I won't say better or worse, it's, it, it can be a, a fun challenge. Anyways, there, we found harvests. But maybe I will put, and then we have, here, there's about, 50 or 100 pages on uh, on the end here that haven't been put into into pan to um, into the book yet, and they will be eventually. I need to get a bigger binder. I need to. I liked the uh, the half inch because it was nice and small and chill. But now the binder itself is much fatter than half an inch. So maybe I'll do that tomorrow go to Staples and get myself a new binder so that I can put in all the other signatures that are in there. <laughs> I don't know that I'm an OP encyclopedia. Um, I could talk about OP all day long. Um, I'm not a very good uh, fact rememberer, unfortunately. I've learned pretty much all of the stuff when it comes to Spencerian and ornamental penmanship multiple times, but it doesn't always, the, the facts don't always stick in my names. It's like in the hip hop world, hip hop comes from the party grooves that people used to do, and there's moves like the jerk and the, the Bart Simpson, and uh, there's the Reebok, like all the old party grooves had names, and I was a groove instructor. So I had to know all those names, and I've learned all those names countless times from some of the people who invented them uh, way back in the day. And I can't for the life of me remember all of them anymore. It just goes in, in and out. Uh, luckily, I like learning it, so I end up researching, <laughs> re-researching. Um, I'm a professional re-researcher because I learn things, forget them, and then get to learn them again. All right, let's, I think I like this design. I'm gonna put a shade on this stroke right there, I think. And then, so we still have, as far as balance goes, we have, we're relatively balanced for our capital letters. They fit in this nice space, shade, shade, shade. And then if I throw a shade here, that should keep the whole thing looking pretty good. And it should look traditional as well. Oh, thanks, Ayaz. The uh, Laurie and Andrew Merrigan. Do you mean the one where I do both at the same time? It's like to ballet music. Um, I do, I do journals for them every every year. Uh, for the past three or four years now, I do not journals. I guess. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not calendar. I guess journals, calendar, day planner. That's the word I needed. Um, I actually have filmed, uh, I did planners for them this year, and I have the footage on my computer. I'm about <laughs> 30, 
leather foiling projects behind in editing videos. Um, I have a large folder of unedited blotter videos and like flask videos and stuff like that. I record everything, but I edit a lot less than I than I record and that I create. So one of these days, I'll edit those videos and flood Instagram with them. What's going on, Fuzzy? No hat today. Nope, we got black hair. My hair's really dark today because of the lighting. Okay, oh, now I forget the signature that we designed. R.W. Loveless. This isn't going to be like Sig Sling and Sunday. I'm not going to try to do it a billion times to get it perfect. I'm just going to try to write it. And if it works, then we'll move on and design another signature. And the only person in the chat that's not allowed to have their name designed is James, because I've done his name too many times already. Luckily, no, I mean, none of these connections we designed are that obscure or crazy, so this one shouldn't be terribly difficult. So long as my hand is in a good writing mood. That's not the what I was gonna do. That's not what I planned to do at all. stem but the connection looks good now I really use this connection out of the W but it was one they used in vintage signatures all the time so we're gonna try it oh you can't see that the hairline disappeared went too low on that one. That's the idea. The whole thing looks too long when I write it though. I need to be able to, it needs to condense. The biggest issue I have with the signatures that I designed that are in that binder I was showing is that I can't write them like that. That's the frustrating part. Uh, the way I design signatures and the way I write signatures are completely different. Um, my ornamental penmanship versus my designed work is very, very different, um, unfortunately. I always say that the eventual goal, if, if I had, like if I could wave my magic wand, um, I'd be able to write the signatures that I design. Because I love the designs that I come up with, but I can't, I mean, they're most of the time just way too difficult and intricate for me to actually be able to write the way that they're designed, unfortunately. So far anyways, maybe one day, if I work harder than I work currently. All right, let's try to condense this one a little bit. Oh, 
Okay, those are nice and close together. So now the key is going to be getting the L close to the W. Ish. Not a very pretty L. Like so. Oh, I can't even write my own monogram. That's... <laughs> Since I have this folder right here, actually. That's this one, right? That's something I'm supposed to do on one of these late night lives, isn't it? I'm supposed to... Maybe we'll do that tonight. This piece. I didn't realize how big that was. This is the original ink on paper and pencil. It's shaded in pencil. Um, but this is the monogram that I will. I want to be able to write one day. But it's so awkward. It's so weird because it's it's half ovals and half circles and spirals. But the ovals spiral into the circles, and everything has to connect at. Uh, the open this is really really hard <laughs> design to write I feel like I tried it that one time and I, oh, I didn't try it very many times that night that was like at the very beginning of the late night lives how does this even work every letter I think design wise it's pretty basic it goes that just ends ah the and the entry of the W is where everything gets difficult because it has to go from round to an angled oval and it has to hit all the right spots and then there's another one uh, going anytime you do like the exit of a W fitting inside a G this looks like a little Celtic knot if you look at just that little part of the G that's like a little Celtic knot in there unintentional Because the G itself is just standard, just simple, and quite small, but this W has to fit perfectly inside it. <laughs> yeah, blame, I mean, straight up, I'm okay with that. Blame the designer. I blame me. Things I design are impossible. This is my latest design that I was working on just uh, yesterday. Was this little guy here? It's not super fancy, and I was debating making it fancy, but I think I might leave it plain. And I don't need. I have no idea what its purpose is. Um, uh, a while ago, I was contemplating using this as a like a business name, um, like Mike Ward. The itinerant penman. Itinerant means somebody who travels pretty much non-stop from place to place. Um, and I just like the sound of the itinerant penman, though nobody really knows what the word itinerant means and it's not one that's used very often. But it popped in my head the other day when I was chilling, so I decided to design this. Um, and I think I could actually write this though, minus this part would be weird, going from that long of a straight line into a large horizontal or large circle starting into the the eye and then that's just a regular twister shaded eye that I I'm pretty sure I can do I don't know if it would it wouldn't look exactly like this but uh yeah it's a fun design that I was working on for me When your writing doesn't look like the design as you imagined, how do you go about in improvising changes? Um, so do you mean like, I don't know specifically what you mean. I mean, do you mean like if I design something in pencil and then try to write it? Um, one of the main things that I have to do when I write my designs is 
I write a lot. I write stretched out, basically. Um, I don't write very condensed. But I design... My ovals in my designs are pretty circular. Everything... I like the way that Kanan designed signatures and, and did writing. And some of his more designed work tends to be very rounded-based forms. Um, so I find that when I design things in my brain, the way it flows and looks the best ends up being a little bit more circular than I seem to be able to write. Um, and that's, I don't write as stretched out now as I used to. I'm slowly gaining the control of squishing my ovals to be a little more circular. Um, so that's probably what I try to do is you just like take a breath, try to slow down, or if you're, if you're talking about just if I'm imagining something and I write it and it doesn't look like what I want it to look like, then it's when I break things down into drills. Every individual stroke, um, like for example on this signature we're just doing the W into the L, just that exit stroke, the, uh, the coming, finishing the W into like that stroke right there, the W into the ending of the W into the L. I would break that down like I'm doing it here and do it over and over again till that movement feels comfortable and looks and is shaped the way I want it. And when you're doing it this way, let's say I was doing this like this and I, I wanted it to be closer together. So if I was doing this and I realized, well, that's going to make the L really far from the W, I would... Um, you would just, as you're going, you start, how about I go up to, I go up to like here instead, if I leave that as my target. So you're going, and then you train yourself to go from, to where you were, uh, just naturally, to go a little more, to hit a, a new target. And then that's training your muscles over and over and over again to be able to do that new shape as naturally as you would did the first one you did. So it's just training the muscles. Um, repetition is one of your, is your best friend when it comes to this stuff, pretty much. Yeah, Kanan's super circular. I wanna do something like that for a return address stamp. Um. Do I know where to order one of those? I mean, Etsy, I guess. Yes, but talk to uh, James. Reach out to Bailey. I know she doesn't do it anymore, but they, through their business, they used to do stamps and stuff like that. Um, they don't anymore, but she, I'm pretty, she has somebody. Like it's a, it's a service that they do for their business, so they maybe have a good source. I know Kestrel does stamps, I think anyways, uh, as well, but there's a, I mean, there's a ton on Etsy. I just can't speak to the quality of many of them because I haven't used them. You should just do a design and get your envelopes printed like this. Then you have your envelopes with your stamp on it and you can get more intricate than a stamp. All right, let's do this one one more time, then we'll do another thing. I'm really liking that R to W connection. They fit really well together. I'm not liking the W to L. I'm trying to think if there's a better way I can get into that, but I can't really think of oh, without cluttering everything. I guess there is one thing we could try. I didn't do this in the initial design, but I'm going to try it when writing it. We can go up through there, which is 
a little less traditional, I think, but it works. Maybe it's the L. Maybe this, that L doesn't work with this design. Maybe I should have gone into a standard L like that would have been better. That probably would have been better. That second R shade, I mean, that comes from Canaan. It's pretty much, I'm pretty sure where I got inspired to do that little, that last little shade on the R from. I think, anyways. Pretty sure Berensmeyer did it too, but Canons were very, very bulbous. Nib snappy. Okay. So let's just put a standard L on the end of this thing. Maybe that'll look better. I didn't go quite high enough, but I do like that this goes through the little loop of the L. That was unintentional. I think that's better. Thanks, Ice Creamy. Yeah, I've been trying really hard to to rein in my writing, um, so it's not quite so elongated. All right, let's get let's get another name. Another. Let's do a random name. Something. Just chuck out a bunch of. Name with a Q. All right, so we'll start with a Q. Now we need a middle initial and a last name. Or the Q could be the middle initial. Quentin. Wait, is that the, is that gonna be the last name? Q and an I. All right, James. I see your challenge. I, the backwards letter. It'd be tough to design things with capital I's. QZ. Oh gosh. Let's go. We're gonna go Q I Z Q I Z. Oh, there. <laughs> Ian Z Quentin. That is banana pants. Ian Z Quentin. Starting with an I is okay. I'm gonna take out the uh, I A I N. So it's just gonna be I I Z Quentin. I Z Quentin. So if I take out the lowercase letters, my Z's gotta be tucked right in here. Oh, this is weird because I have a stem, a stem shade, and a reversed oval shade back to back. So the pressure to get them both looking like they're supposed to is very high. Because if they look the same, then I will have messed up. You have to easily be able to identify which one is which. And then for Quentin... I mean, the smart thing to do would be to use the Q that looks like a 2. Okay. 
how do we make this all <laughs> look good together? What? My initial thought is to bring this all the way over into there, but I think that'll look too weird. It does look like one, two, three. Maybe that would be their nickname. If the person's name was uh, Izzy Quinton, maybe people would just call him one, two, three. Izzy. Start this I down here instead so it looks. This is gonna be a really hard signature. <laughs> oh, this gets too close to that. That's a problem. That's okay. I'm, it'll be farther apart than this, I'm almost certain. So they won't be too close together. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> it's okay. I don't like this space in here. They're all, I almost dipped my pencil, straight up, almost dipped my pencil in my ink, just out of habit. I'm glad I didn't do that. Oh, you know what's crazy? I mean, with the I and the Z, or the I and the Z, I just accidentally created an infinity letter. But. That leaves the Q super left out, which isn't very nice of us. How can I do the Q? True, it would have been. I totally for I didn't post a signature on Sunday, and I realized like, what's today, Tuesday? I think I realized on Monday that Sunday came and went, and I didn't even post a Sig Sling and Sunday signature. So sorry, everybody. I totally missed last week. Um, and I haven't posted a breakdown. I'm super not on the ball, unfortunately, for the Sig Sling and challenge this time around. Q and Z back to back are very challenging. There has to be. I mean, I could use a different variation of the Q, but I kind of want to use this one now, now that we're here. But it just has to, like, does it go from in here? This could go here and go into the queue. That's very, that ends up being very loopy down there. And then the eye starts over here into the queue. on this side to get rid of that empty space. Across the T, right after this ending shade turns to a hairline, it'll cross through the T. That's the theory. There's a balloon. <laughs> 
the hilarious part, I love that you mentioned uh, balloon dogs, Oda Swinney, because if you look at my Instagram, uh, when I posted the what people wanted us to discuss today, uh, my friend Devin said, wait, where is it so you guys can see it? Balloon animals. He requested, oh, it's out of focus. He requested balloon animals. So, there we go. We'll draw a balloon dog inside the Q or inside the Z. Can I write this? Eh, yet to be foreseen. Oh, wow. I was so focused on this Q and Z, I didn't even see David show up. What up, Mr. Grimes? <laughs> yep. I would be lost. Well, not lost. I love uh, the chalk. I don't know if it's actually chalk, but the Fonz and Porter white mechanical pencils, because this is what I use for transferring onto leather all the time. You can't write directly on the leather, but when I do burning designs and whatnot, this is uh, an important tool in my day-to-day -day processes. <laughs> All connected. Magic. Okay. Wow, this signature is for real. Or this... These capitals are no joke. Alright, let me zoom out a little bit. Because I don't know if I'll be able to keep this... I don't know if I'll be able to do this one at all. To be quite honest... <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay, so the I has to start way to the right. Well, where do I go here? There. It's actually not... I mean, this isn't... isn't super clean or good. But it's not quite as ridiculous as it feels like it would be. It, it's gonna take some training to get the all those spaces filled out I don't know I still don't like all this space that's over here on the left it is also weird that we have the sort of pointier top of the I and two rounded tops of the Z and the Q which a way to solve that would be to use a different Q um, because then we are not we don't have two forms where we don't we step away from the one of these things is not like the other problems but did I forget something oh I just forgot that little guy here right okay let's try now a little bit more serious. I might have to do this in whole arm. To be able to do the whole thing in one stroke. Oh, that's supposed to go this way. Hmm. I think I have another idea for coming out of the eye that I might like a little bit more. And that would be... Oh, this goes through there. Like so, I think I like that better because then we have we're finishing our capitals with this horizontal oval and we're starting them with this horizontal oval that sticks out there. I like that better. All right, 
and I'm gonna do my Z and Q in two strokes rather than one so it gives me a chance to catch my breath Ugh, ugly shade. So many ugly shades. Hmm. And I went too long on the exit oval after Quentin. What up, Suvik? I feel like long time no see. <laughs> it looks like the Sydney Opera House. Kinda. Maybe the Sydney Opera House was built by I, uh, Ian Z. Quentin, and that is secretly the shape, the building is shaped to, to make his name. Um, and nobody knows it. It's, but now we have discovered it. So we are the starters of a, the Sydney Opera House conspiracy theory. <laughs> Why are my reversed oval shades so ri ridiculous today? and not uniform. I'm also getting nib snips. I should try this on the gray paper instead of the black. Okay, let's try again. Raise my chair a wee bit. Cause something's not working right. I did not expect that we would figure out a design that actually looked, I like this signature. In theory, can't write it yet, but oh, come on, that one felt good. Ugh. So I have to fix this this issue that's happening. I'm gonna have to drill these these two strokes because coming into the first Z from this large oval here versus coming into this one from a smaller, I end up with a more angled oval here when compared to the larger oval here. So they're ending up on two different angles, which is no bueno. So I gotta slow down ever so slightly. It's the haircut. Totally. I should wait. I know what'll fix everything. This will make everything better. This is the secret to my success. Without it, I am nothing. What? The bowler hat just feels and looks different when I get a haircut. I, I like the bowler hat more when I have longer hair inside it. As random as that sounds, probably. Still weird shape. Okay, so for here. I think I gotta do those cues. I gotta work on my indirect ovals in general. I 
I wish I wasn't getting disappearing headlines. Headline? Hairlines as well. Which... Maybe I'll try... What do I have on my desk that's readily available here? Are you gonna write good for me? Oh no, where's the... Half the nibs on my desk right now aren't actually... Uh, they're not good uh, for writing. Half the nibs that are on my desk currently have been sharpened. The back end of them have been sharpened into little knives for um, paper carving. So a lot of them, I don't, I have to go to, I gotta watch which ones I grab. Because only some of them are suitable for writing, I think. Bowler hats can be, uh, I think for a lot of people, it's just, I think it's an acquired taste, the look of a bowler hat. Um, I don't think anybody just naturally pulls them off, but if you put them, it's like a, if you get used to the way a bowler hat looks and you like it, then, and also it really depends on the shape of the hat. Um, like a, a poor shaped bowler hat or one that's too big or has too big of a brim or is too boxy on top, they can look really ugly. It was music to my ears a few days ago. I was video chatting with my niece and nephew. It was his birthday. And my niece informed me that her bowler hat, she wears a bowler hat all the time when they go out, which is awesome. It's more of a, I think the proper name is a cloche. Um, it's a, it's, an, it's not a proper shaped bowler hat, but it's, I bought them for them when they were really young. But her bowler hat she wears all the time is old and misshapen, and she informed me that she needs a new one. And that was music to my ears when my niece told me she needs a new bowler hat, so that's awesome. Training little future bowler hat wearers. Okay, I don't know if this nib is any good or not, but I want my hairlines to be more visible. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. I think I started wearing bowler hats originally because of funk dance, because of the lockers and poppers of the eight, uh, 70s and 80s. And a friend of mine gave me one as a gift. He had one and he didn't wear it. And he gave it to me. And then that was where it all started. That's better. Ah! Couldn't I have done that one better? Oh well. Okay, so I already crossed the T, unfortunately, with that one, so I can't cross it with the exit stroke. That's the idea, I like that. Obviously, it would be much better if I could nail the two Q's, or the two indirect oval shades, the same. Come on, hand, we'll try this one more time.
Ugh. <laughs> Not a good flow on that last stroke, but these the Z and the Q look better on this one and I do like I didn't do this on the other ones but it happened if I bring this first oval after the shade of the eye over a little bit more I can thread it with the little loop of the Z which is pretty cool there's a lot of potential in that little in that little signature but that was a fun little challenge thanks for that next what do we got coming up next Again, today's not, maybe I'll try to master these signatures in the next couple days and I'll do proper, proper movement training to, to get my arm to be able to write them better. Um, but for now, just a matter of, we're just working on writing them and see if we can get them halfway decent. Oh my goodness, Gloria, that is long. G-R-M-Y-R-A-D. Give it a shot. That is a long, that is a lot of, a lot of capital letters. Everybody's trying to break my brain. Break my brain tonight. But that's alright. I said I was in the mood to do some signature designing, so that's what we're doing. Okay. So we got G R M Y R A D. Okay. <laughs> you want to know what my writing looks like normally? That's my normal writing. Itty bitty capital letters. Okay. Y is a descender stroke, so we will use almost dipped my pen so in the ink again, but we will use the A variation of the G. I think for now we'll start with that, so then we have two descenders in the whole piece. G. R. And we'll tuck that one nice and close in there. Ooh, we can use the same connection potentially that we used for the W, the W and the R on the last one, maybe. And Y, which gives us our second descender. M to Y is weird. Okay. We've got to get creative. We're going to go into Oh, bummer. With this going here, I can't really bring the G through there. I mean, I could, but that's a lot going through there. That might be too cluttery. I brought this up here. I started that one with a horizontal oval. I mean, if I hit it, it would look really cool, but it might end up being too busy in there. Hmm. We'll experiment with it. Why can't just be standalone? That's not okay. Hmm. <laughs> this is fully arcade music. We should be playing Galaga or Burger Time or Metroid. I don't really like starting, I want to start that with some form of entry oval, I think, but we might use one of these instead of an actual entry oval. We might use one of those just to get something going there. This is too much, too big.
Hmm. This is rather... This song is very repetitive. It's literally... Eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> over and over and over again. It doesn't really change with the piano in the background. Wait, where is it? There's like bum 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 in the background. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bum bum bum. <laughs> this is one of those like. 80s, 80s movie, it's like the movie interlude. Like this would be like the montage music for like Karate Kid or something. Oh, is it fading out? And then the classic fade out at the end. Not even gonna change the music to end, just gonna give us a good clean fade. Hmm. How can I get into this? Why? This is a similar issue I ran into designing when I did a signature for Dr. Joe. Because if I do that, it ends up being so... Because that stem has to be close. Unless the R creates that. Okay, that might not work. Well, I guess it can go through here instead. And go over the M. And the G is what creates the M? And what creates the R? Maybe nothing. Hmm, <laughs> Oh, that doesn't work because of the bowl of the R. This is getting way too complicated.
there's a lot going on here. This might not work at all, but we're gonna give it a shot. Not sure I like the entry. This is one of those, this combination of letters I would have to get, I think, quite creative, maybe with the sizes of them, to get something that that flows and is interesting. It either has to go really, really complicated and, and fancy, or quite the other opposite direction. I think if the penmen of old uh, were doing this one, they would opt for the it would be a less flourish that each individual letter might be flourished a lot, but they wouldn't do a lot of superscription and connections, I don't think. Because a lot of the connections aren't supernatural. Let's just try. Let me take out that loop I put in the very beginning though. I don't think I liked it. Giant G. Oh, that was supposed to be a stem shade, not a indirect oval shade, but that's alright. Not a huge deal. room for the ending of the M. <laughs> or the ending of my sign of the signature in general. There's the I'll be honest, it turned out better than I thought it would. For a first uh, attempt, that's a decent Proof of concept. I wonder if I might start the R with a different stroke, though. <laughs> it's not that your name's hard, Gloria. It's just that all of those uh, capital. I mean. Already it's it's four capitals, which is quite challenging, um, versus three. Um, but the biggest thing is they're, they don't super, they don't necessarily all flow together. So it's, like I said, a traditional penman would likely just, like, do a really beautiful, super flourished um, individual letters with not a lot of connections, which a lot of penmen didn't use a lot of connections all the time. Um, uh, teachers of signature design like myself will often stress the don't get married to a connection or you don't don't necessarily try to connect everything because it can make things sort of awkward looking sometimes uh, where a signature would look a lot better if you just left some letters or some strokes be somewhat standalone um, I'm sort of going out of my way to try to connect things right now just in the interest of design and whatnot, but it's not something that would be normal. Normally we would just make the signature or 
the signature would be made just complicated, but not necessarily all connected and super complicated. I'm just a glutton for punishment. Well, I'm actually gonna draw in the, fix the shape of that stem because that is ugly. I don't usually do that. Okay, so far so good. Keep it quite low. Those compound curvy on that G. I think all told, that looks pretty cool. Obviously not perfect execution, but an extremely creative, uh, I mean, that's, that one takes a bit of mind power to, to think through where all those connections and stuff are gonna go. Um, I made my ending ovals on the M and on the Y are much too big, but uh, a, neat, a neat idea. Came out kinda cool. Kind of cool. A little bit of water. I'm just realizing I didn't even make tea today. That's all. to get a massage. My back has been hurting me a lot lately. It's not from writing. I think it's just from time at the computer, typing and whatnot. I need to get a massage. <laughs> You're welcome, Gloria. A fun little challenge. Should we do another one of these? Or should we practice, should we practice some strokes? What do you guys wanna do next? Should we do another name? Uh, I wanna do, I like the idea of doing figment uh, imaginative names rather than um, people's names in the chat. Um, I'm gonna stay away from doing actual uh, initials and things like that. We could do like movie characters or just random names like when we do the Q one uh, And then I'll write people's names the next time I do a, a People name writing, but this is gonna be more so for the designing of Just some random connections because they can be kind of fun to put together Or we could do, instead of a name, we could do like a really short saying or quote, but like a really short one. 
and see if we can actually design a quote to look like we would design a name. Or we could do uh, Game of Thrones name. Yeah, we could do anything. Tell you what, everybody chuck out some capital letters and we'll, we're going to create a name like we did before. Check out capital letters and a last name, and we'll see what we come up with, something completely random. God. <laughs> Whoa, Alphonse, that's a cool last name. E, all right, so if we go E Alphonse, we need a middle, a middle initial. Then I see Judy wrote, love never fails. Maybe we'll do that after E Alphonse as a, a designed quote, if we can do that. Okay, J says D, E D Alphonse. Sure, why not? Oh, oh, just when he said D as well, so that works. All right, so we're gonna go E, D, Alphonse. I don't know if I'm saying Alphonse right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. Oh, nice. We start with this as standard E. Then we're gonna have a D tucked in there. What if we do one? I was gonna try it. Normally, I do backward signatures when the front way doesn't work. What if? What if I start with Alphonse? This might not work, but we'll find out. Come through here. Might be a little too abstract entrance into the E. <laughs> oh, we'll have to do an extra little loop in there. Make that look a little better. That could be cool. I might go into the A or into the D a little bit. No. Can I bring the A smaller? I don't have to go quite so high for the D. Maybe. I guess technically this D should have a shade over here, but 
we shade the stem I don't know let's see if this works we can always change it <laughs> it looks cool now just when it might not look cool <laughs> in a few minutes we'll see <laughs> Neither did I, Jay. That's uh, the one of the coolest things about, I mean, doing designs this way versus when I do names. Uh, when I do names, I don't really take time to design it. I think about it, and whatever my brain comes up with, that's usually what I'll end up writing, or I just let my hand go, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. When you take a few minutes to try to think through some stuff, um... When you get used to all the letter forms and the flourishing, sort of opportunities will kind of present themselves sometimes. And a lot of times, most of the time, they don't really work. But sometimes they do, and it can be really fun to do experiments like this. And if they don't work, it doesn't really matter. Because at the end of the day, um, what matters is that we're experimenting. I just got a neat idea coming out of that D into the E, but I'm not going to try it quite yet. I'm going to try this first. Oh gosh, all backwards, kid. A and, and I also despise the letter D. <laughs> we are not friends. A. Oh, that's very angled. Whoops, ugly D, and I went way below the baseline, but that's all right. Let me just imagine going into the E from there. Oh, and then I finished right with that. I guess I don't have to finish with that extra little loop. It might look just as good if I just finish it like that inside with an angled oval, which I don't normally do for the ending of letters. But maybe. Okay, that D is gonna be. <laughs> Understandable. I rarely write nice looking capital D's. They are, uh, especially this variation, the D that I use most is the more standard D. That one there, uh, but it's not, not my strongest letter. For no real good reason, my hand just doesn't like creating it, apparently. <laughs> Luckily, most people, I think most people's most hated letters is like the D or the capital E, I think is pretty commonly letters that people don't like all that much, I think. Okay, let's try this shindig again. The issue with doing the D that way is it gets completely lost. But I like the idea of having the D inside the A. What else can we do here to make the D stand out a little better? But it does get lost a little bit. It'd 
they're gonna drop that whole loop below the baseline as well. Maybe this has to have a loop here into the E. Doesn't look quite as slick though. Ooh, that could be cool. Huh, that's neat. Or, let me rephrase, that might be neat. Oh, my skin turns red so fast. <laughs> totally looks like I'm dying. Okay, this could be really neat. <laughs> D is demented. It's true. I was going to say, Fozzie must not be here anymore. Uh, because if we were talking about the capital letter D and she was here, she definitely would have chimed in by now. And called it the devil letter or something to that effect. Of course, lately she also despises the capital E. I've been doing the capital E a lot lately in signatures. That was one of, she direct messaged me earlier today. No more E's. Whoa, that was a slow shade. Too slow. That, aside from the fact that this D is completely the wrong shape, and it should go there, that is a cool... finish this with like a I guess I could compound curve I kind of want to finish it just with like one of those so the whole signature is like a continuous taper all the way to the end <laughs> we got something here ladies and gentlemen if I could write a capital D this would look really good so we're gonna take a pause from <laughs> It's a D, Fuzzy. I just can't write it yet, okay? Give me a break. <laughs> Fuzzy really knows how to hurt me. <laughs> hurt my pride. <laughs> Don't apologize. It's an extremely crappy D. Why is my neck glowing? All I did was, I think I was leaning on it. I have, uh, I've makeup artists in the past have told me uh, when I'm on set that I have hyper color changing skin where my skin will turn red like with just like a, if I just like rub it or if I rub something it'll turn like super super red or if I scratch even lightly it looks like I'm dying. <laughs> okay, let's... First, figure out how to do this D, shall we? So with this variation of the D, we gotta go. That's what we want. I never use this variation of the D. Well. We gotta really quickly get up to that compound curve. Maybe we'll, we gotta go up a little bit. 
quicker. It's shaped like the copper plate D more so than a Spencerian D. <laughs> What's going on, Chantel? <laughs> I feel you, Fuzzy. Normally I do too, but it just popped into my head when I was making this design. And unfortunately, I feel like it'll really work. But unfortunately, be because I don't want to do this capital D. Okay, that's what we need. That's not that, okay. That can't be that hard, it's not a perfect D, but it's better than the one I did in that signature. Let's try again. I feel like this signature could be really cool. It has potential. Okay. paper so it's in a good place for me to do that compound curve stem stroke and I do have to drop yeah I have to drop the baseline a little bit lower okay. that's gonna be weird Oh, I messed up the ending, but that's the idea. This oval was nicer shape. There is potential there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not the biggest fan of dropping the baseline for the D below, but that's really the only way to make this design work, I think. That's kind of neat. Still not, the D is the, is the major issue, but the design I think is, could be kind of cool, especially if this line actually followed parallel. The idea is neat. This could also just go up and not dip down. It could just go up and stop here so it stays parallel, but I feel like I want it to dip into that. That's a neat idea. I'm gonna write that one one more time. And then we'll move on.
been writing so close to myself all of a sudden. Eh, not the smoothest movement, but I'll take it. Another relatively unique design. Learning languages is cool. That's good. All right. What are we gonna do next here? Looking through the chat. Right, it was Judy said. Short factoids? We could do that. I think that, I mean, Judy earlier suggested love never fails. So it's a design, but, or it's a, it's a little quote or a little saying. Um, I'm gonna do this one and then maybe we can do a, a factoid. But I wanna see if I can do... It might just look like a random quote. But I wanna see if I can do it all sort of connected like we would do a signature. And then do I put fails below it or do or maybe I'll keep it all going in one. Oh, how can I do this? How can I do a heart <laughs> into an N? Is that even possible? I guess that kind of works. That might not look very good, but we'll find out. Underline it that way? Hmm, this could work. Yeah, it needs to be pretty short to do it like a, a design. Maybe, well, maybe we could do a... Maybe we could do that next week, Fuzzy. We could do a... A random facts that would actually be really fun so we could do it like we did when we did the quote day 
when I filled one of the landscape journals with quotes, but instead we'll just do each page will just be a random fact, like turn the page and it'll say frogs can't regurgitate, um, which is a random fact that I happened to pop into my head. Um, if they want to empty their stomachs, they have to, I think this is how it works, they have to spit out their stomach, empty it by hand, and then swallow it again. I don't know, maybe that's, I could be making that up entirely. I feel like I learned that somewhere, though. But, <laughs> but maybe we'll do that, maybe that'll be next week. We'll do a whole quote. Or, not quote, random fact week in a book. That could be fun. Oh, that stem got aggressive. We'll try that again. This nib is a little too it's weirdly sharp. Oh, that's supposed to be <laughs> it's supposed to be an L. Come on, Mike. Remember what you're doing. You're supposed to be focused. It has to have a heart, it's talking about love. And then it'll also have a heart here. It's a little crooked, but that's like Cupid's arrow. Valentine's Day. <laughs> the connection from the S got a little wonky, but I'll try that one more time. <laughs> that comes, I've never drawn that before, but that's fully, the heart and all that kind of stuff comes from doing live events, foiling, when people would say, I want this name, and can you put a heart in it? Just get creative ways of flourishing hearts into things. Mm, my ovals are getting kind of crazy. This ov or this nib makes me very nervous of getting nib snips. It is weirdly scratchy. 
but the line isn't fine enough to deserve being scratchy. That's better. I think we'll keep a little. There. Cupid's arrow. Love never fails. Put a heart in it. Without heart, one cannot write. <laughs> You're welcome, Judy. Sorry that my ovals are a little, a little wonkified. Wonkified. Is that what happened to Augustus Gloop when he fell in the uh, the river of chocolate? Do you think did he get wonkified? <laughs> Sorry, that was cheesy. Oh, well that's fun. Love never fails. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at my joke, Fuzzy. I appreciate it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to end tonight's live right about here. Um, I really like the idea of doing the random facts uh, live. I don't know if I'll do it in a book or if I'll just write a bunch of random facts and cut them out. I'm not sure yet. Um, cutting them out could be fun because I could cut them out and then maybe I'll cut out random facts and mail them to people. What do you want pizza now for? Oh, because I didn't see the Ojas when he mentioned uh, Pizzy Pizza. <laughs> I like that that's just going to be a thing forever. Sorry, Ojas Winnie. Um, I am retired. Chilling today. Um, but I think... Yeah, I'm gonna think on it, but I feel like for now, I'm gonna decide, I'm gonna say that we'll do random facts next week. And maybe I'll post, I'll post early in the week so a lot of people can give us some random facts. I used to be obsessed with random facts when I was younger. I mean, when I was younger, I still kinda am. And random facts stick in my brain, they're fun. So I like that. Idea. Shout out to Fozzy for having that idea. Random facts postcards. That's a good idea. The problem with random facts postcards is I have to get postcard paper that I can write on or glue my written paper to a postcard. I don't know if that would work. I have to think on this. But if I decide now that we're doing random facts, I have a whole week to figure out how I'm going to do that. But random fact, something that gets mailed out will be kind of fun. I'm going to think on this a little more between now and next, or now and the next couple days. Um, ooh, new nap time. That sounds amazing. Or just when, see, you don't want to go late night live. You want to go have a nap. That's fine. We'll tell. It's everybody, if anybody asks why we didn't go to Late Night Live or Blacklight Live tonight, uh, say it's because Oja Swinney wanted to have a nap. It's her fault. <laughs> well, it's not nap time for me. It is midnight. It is, should be bedtime for me. I don't know if I'll go to bed right now. I probably should. I will probably go to bed early tonight. I'm gonna get up early tomorrow and go outside because... 
Vitamin D from the sun is important. Um, and I haven't been getting enough of that lately. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, as always, very much for hanging out with me today. Uh, if you have ideas for future late night lives, drop them in the comments in this YouTube video, and I can put them in the list of cool ideas for future weeks. I think next week we're going to do random fact night live, um, and that'll be fun. Uh, make sure that you are falling in love with the process, and don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that life should be just a bit of silliness, really. Bye, everybody. <laughs>